Matthew. Thank you, Rabbi Green. I appreciate it very much. I just want to say what a privilege it is to have this opportunity to be here. One of the only problems with the afternoon service is that is this right here. It used to be tough. One year we tried doing the Torah service at the end of the service, and it was like right here on the... So then we moved it. It was really, really bad. But it kind of feels like a spotlight in a way, a heavenly spotlight. So maybe I'll take just a little step back, and it'll be a little bit easier. But it is a real privilege to be here. And I just wanted to say that for us up here, we get a perspective that many of you don't get when we get to see everybody. And obviously, the second service has fewer people than the first service. But this year, and again today, we have more people than we've been used to for many, many years. And we just want to thank you for being here, for supporting what we're doing, for supporting the synagogue, as many people in your families have for generations. This building opened in 1950. This congregation goes back to the 1880s. And every year since then, our ancestors, our family, have gathered just like you have today. And we thank you for keeping that going and telling us that you believe in what we're doing and what we're trying to do here. I know we're changing a lot. But we hope that you and we appreciate you embracing these changes. So thank you. And to all of you, Shana Tova Umetuka. Now, speaking of changes, I mentioned that I wanted to speak about Hineni, one of these incredibly powerful words so linked with the High Holy Days. And I want to change the way you think about Hineni. Not to take away from anything that Rabbi Green has said. Everything he said is true. <laughs> But I just want to give you another perspective, because at this time of the year, perspective is very, very important to allow us to perform tshuva, repentance, and a return to the way we want to be, a return to God, of course. So when you hear Hineni, and by the way, we read it today in the Torah, Avraham says it three times, but he's not the only one, though he gets most of the press. Yitzchak at one time says Hineni, Yaakov twice in his life responds to a call with Hineni, Yosef says Hineni. When Moshe, Moses, gets called from the burning bush, he responds Hineni. And even Shmuel the prophet, whom we spoke about a little bit yesterday, he at one time in his life responds Hineni. These are the great figures of our sacred literature. These are the people who said Hineni. And in every instance, Hineni is translated as, here I am. Yet when Rabbi Mas, playing the role of the Chazan, walks from the back of the sanctuary to the front, he says, Hineni, and you stand with him. It's interesting because so much of our liturgy, 99% of Jewish prayer is in the plural. Think about ones you know, right? Avinu Malkeinu, our father, our king. That's plural. Everything that we say, everything that we say in the, in the Amidah, for example, Anachnu Modim Lach, we bow. Almost everything in Judaism is exclusively communal in prayer. But Hineni is one of these rare moments. And though we don't actually say Hineni, when we stand with the Chazan or the rabbi as he walks from the back, we are saying Hineni. But in the prayer book, in the Machser, Hineni is not translated as here I am. If you look closely, it's translated as here I stand. Now here I am is a fantastic phrase, particularly with the way Rabbi Green explains it, where it's more than just being present, but being naked before God, being ready, being alert, being willing, being bought in, being all in. These are all the connotations of Hineni when you think of it as here I am. But when you take it to the next level and you think of it as here I stand, it becomes more active. Instead of a state of being, there is an action that goes with that state of being. You're also probably used to Hineni being your way of responding to the question. Where are you? Ayeka? Hineni. However, I would invite you to think of Hineni as you starting the conversation, and I would respond to you. Because if you think of Hineni as here I stand, my answer to you would be, or my question rather to you would be, what is it you stand for? For me in my life, as Rabbi Green mentioned, I made a big change last year. For a decade of university, in U of M, and then in Halifax studying journalism, I was focused on a career in journalism, a career in broadcasting, and I was lucky enough to see that dream realized, and of all places in my hometown, and of all things to be talking about sports. I was having a blast for six years. I worked for TSN Radio, as many of you know. I was a broadcaster there for five of those years on the morning show, and for two of those years as the host of that show all before the age of 30, and it was a real dream come true. 
So when I left the radio to commit myself full time to the synagogue and pursue becoming a rabbi, a lot of people looked at me a little cockeyed and wondered why the heck I would give this up, particularly a lot of guys who would say, that sounds like the dream job. Why would you give that up? And of all things, no disrespect, to be a rabbi? Not a lot of people understood. But for me, it was a moment in my life of hineni. Not here I am so much as here I stand. After working at the radio for six years and working on this show, and I did really, really enjoy it, I started to realize that debating the merits of Andre Pavlik's goaltending skills and his save percentage, and whether Jacob Truba could play the left side as a defenseman, it wasn't exactly starting to feel like the most fulfilling work in the world. It wasn't what I wanted to stand for. After a year of training, after a year of studying, both Rabbi Moss and I were ordained this past July in New York by our teacher, Rabbi Stephen Blaine, who will be coming in November for our installation. And we invite you, of course, to attend. But since the ordination, not much, to be honest with you, has changed for me, except for one major part of the role. And I knew what it was when I was signing up for it. Funerals. I had never performed a funeral before. I've been officiating at weddings since 2011. I've been involved with bar mitzvah preparation since I started here in 2004. But I'll be honest with you, I was delaying doing funerals for as long as possible. Because even though Rabbi Green encouraged me to start getting some experience, I told him, the last time I checked, you're still on contract till the end of March, so we're going to make you do as many funerals as you can possibly do before you're done. Because I knew, God willing, I'd be staring down the barrel of 30 possibly plus years of lots of funerals. It's just a reality of this job. Earlier this summer, I had the experience of officiating in my first funeral. And in fact, the way that it fell that week, both Rabbi Green and Rabbi Moss were out of town, and we had three funerals at Shari Zedek. And so in the span of just six days, I met with three separate families, and we buried three different people from our community. And at that very first funeral, I realized the chilling sound of the dirt falling into the grave, hitting the casket. What we had talked about as a family to prepare the eulogy and what we talked about that day could really be summed up by saying what that person stood for, what that person lived her life or his life for. Above us here on the ark, a lot of times we forget that it says, Da lifne mi ata omed. No, not no, like my parents used to say, but no, no, K-N-O-W. Know before whom you stand, which makes a lot of sense in a synagogue because the answer, of course, is God. But just as I would change the way you look at Hinani, I would think change the way you think of that phrase. Take out the He, Nun, and Yud, and it becomes Da, Lemi, Ata, Omed. Know for whom you stand. Is the answer yourself? Is the answer somebody else? And if you change the Lemi to Lema, becomes the same question really is when I ask you, what is it you stand for? Know for what you stand. Hineni, not so much here I am, but here I stand. One day, and hopefully a long time from now, it was very obvious to me in that moment at my first funeral, it hit me that one day it will be me. And someone will be speaking about me. And I was thinking about what I want them to say I stood for. And I invite you, whether you're my Baba's age, or my parents' age, or my age, or younger, it is never too early to think about what you want them to say about you one day. In fact, they may be saying about it tomorrow. This is the time of year where we talk about judgment. What is it we want to be judged for? By our peers, by our family, by ourselves time of remembrance. What is it we want to be remembered for by our peers, by our family, and by ourselves? At the beginning of the talk, I mentioned that Hinani links us to the great ancestors of our tradition, the central figures of the Torah. We should keep that in mind when we say Hinani, that we're tying into something very, very special. Because those guys knew what they stood for as well. And in fact, if you look closely, for each of the characters I mentioned who said Hineni at one time or another in his life, Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Yosef, Moshe, 
Shmuel. Our rabbis teach us that Hinani always signals a turning point in their lives. That right after they utter Hinani, something big time changes for them. We saw it with Avraham today, a reaffirmation of the covenant. With Yaakov, it was a return home after being really fugitive for 20 years. For Yosef, moments before he was sold into slavery and ended up in Egypt, which changed his life forever. For Moshe from the burning bush. In each of these cases, Hinani was a turning point. In today's terms, we can use this and realize that when we say Hinani, and when we say it in a way where we're answering the question, where or for what do you stand? That it becomes a turning point in our lives. It doesn't have to be a one-time thing. Avraham said it three times. Yaakov said it twice. Hinani is something that can evolve, but only if we buy in completely. Not just to be, here I am, but to say, here I stand. And what is it I stand for? And what will I be remembered for? And what will I be judged for? So I give you a week. I encourage you and I challenge you to take this week between now and Yom Kippur so that when we're all back here again next week and Chazan Rabbi Mas walks from the back and you join him in solidarity and you stand and you say with your feet, and with your hearts, and with your souls, Kenany, that you know what it is you stand for. I wish you all again a Shana Tova Umetuka. Shakoach Rabbi Leibel.